There's been a lot of discussion lately about an NVIDIA NDA that was published by Heiser.de, which Reddit has since run with and gone crazy with. So rather than resorting to armchair lawyers online, we spoke to an actual lawyer about the NVIDIA NDA to discuss whether or not it's legitimately problematic. Problems raised or issues raised by commenters online have primarily indicated a concern that NVIDIA is trying to strong arm only positive content out of media outlets. We've reviewed the NDA, we've spoken with a couple of lawyers about it, and we disagree with this sentiment. However, we decided to speak with, as I said, a lawyer who agreed to be on audio, call in for this, and talk about the NDA so we could get someone who's actually a legitimate source to talk about what they think of the specific language herein, and this is primarily a phone call. So it's got some video, it's just screenshots of questions from Reddit. You can tab away and just listen to this if you like, because it's mostly our legal correspondent speaking about his thoughts on the whole matter. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the Gamers Nexus Anti-Static Mod Map. The GN Anti-Static Mod Map is a four foot by two foot surface, two millimeters thick of high quality industrial grade anti-static material. And it includes a common ground point for earth, a grounding wrist strap, and it has on it electrical wiring diagrams that may prove useful, a GPU silhouette and grid for your teardown efforts, and other useful items. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a GN mod mat today. Hey everyone, so today we're going to go over a leaked NVIDIA NDA that was posted on Heiza.de, and I have with me a GN legal correspondent, Jack, who is a U.S. attorney. Jack, how's it going? Pretty good, Steve. How are you? I'm doing well. We have, uh, we have an interesting one here. We have a bit of irony with this document because the NDA can be discussed because it is in the public domain. <laughs> so, so the NDA yeah, allows for the discussion <laughs> of the NDA. Right, yeah, that is correct. And uh, so this one, there's been a lot of conversation online. For everyone watching, uh, we don't, I'm going to do my very best here to focus on some of the comments we've seen you all post on Reddit or elsewhere, go through them without injecting too much of my own opinion unless it specifically pertains to how a reviewer or reporter would interact with this document. And I'm going to allow Jack to take all the legal questions and hopefully we can answer some of this stuff as neutrally and accurately as possible from a legal standpoint. So, uh, Jack, that sounds good to you. I think I think we can get started. Yeah, of course. So I think the main thing we should start with here is anyone who hasn't seen the document, it was posted by German website Heise.de, and that's the specific version of this document we're talking about. In the document, we first need to define the word confidential information. So this comes up a lot and it has a very specific meaning. So Jack, let's let's go over what this is. So in any contract like this, which is that's all an NDA is, they always have certain ter terms of art which are just defined in the document because somewhere else they may mean something else. So in this document, the, the phrase to pay attention to is confidential information. Paragraph one defines it as any and all technical and non-technical information disclosed and made available to recipient, which would be GN or some other outlet, from time to time by the disclosing party. That's NVIDIA, including but not limited to terms of the agreement, assets, materials, etc. Basically, it covers whatever they tell you that they deem confidential information at the time they tell you what it is. A good example would be a release date of a product. So if they say Turing is going to be released on, on September 1st, that would be covered or some other type of uh, technical information, how many cores it runs, what it clocks to, what type of memory it uses, things like that. Right. And this is so far, this is all pretty standard. A lot of the, from the reviewer side, a lot of the time when products come out, I'd say probably about 90% of the time we don't sign a literal NDA. Uh, companies like case companies and cooler companies, they just, they don't care. Uh, worst case scenario, you break the embargo. They say you weren't supposed to do that. And then, Either there's an apology exchanged or the reviewer might say, I know I wasn't supposed to, I did it anyway, in which case they stop sampling the reviewer. But in the instance of a company like Intel, uh, occasionally we'll get NDAs from Intel's partners or from NVIDIA and AMD's partners. It tends to be these larger big three vendors that get involved with a written agreement of some kind. NVIDIA to date, I can say uh, we have not had to deal with a specific document like this before. Typically the agreements are a company will send an email and the company might say, you are under embargo until date, do you agree? And you say yes or no. So that's typically how it works. Now, uh, next term to define. So the disclosing party, 
who specifically is that and does it include obviously nvidia's in there but does it include nvidia's partners so uh, one of the other terms that needs to be defined is the disclo- so the, the disclosing party. So there are a few parties in play in this agreement, as there is with anyone. There's the agreement, which is the document itself. There's the effective date, which is whatever they agree on. There's the disclosing party, which is defined specifically as NVIDIA Corporation, Delaware Corporation, on behalf of itself and any of its subsidiaries. So that would not include an, uh, a board partner. It would be just NVIDIA or whatever other companies it might own. And then the recipient is going to be whoever is talking to NVIDIA. So it would be GN or Linus or whoever is talking to them. Right. Okay, so now that we've got that defined, let's start with the most critically examined piece of this from everyone online. The biggest thing people have pointed out is this phrase, use restriction. Recipient shall use confidential information solely for the benefit of NVIDIA and shall not so forth, A through H. So the question is, well, actually, let me just read you one of the comments that was upvoted very high on Reddit. Uh, quote, holy shit, they're basically saying NDA signers have to write positive press for them. So what's your interpretation? That's not even remotely true. The phrase solely for the benefit of is a little bit um, nebulous. I wouldn't have drafted it this way. Um, but for the benefit of means something very different in legalese than it means in real life. So when you say for the benefit of, it doesn't necessarily mean it's to help NVIDIA. It just means on behalf of. So, for example, you can have a bank account that you may run, but it's for the benefit of somebody else. So it's really the money in the account somebody else's money, but you're running it. It doesn't have any sort of judgment value on good or bad. It just is a thing. That being said, what you really need to pay attention to is paragraph four, which talks about things which are accepted have an exemption from the confidentiality, the most important of which would be, uh, I think it's uh, uh, letter C. So it'd be paragraph four, letter C, which is independently developed developed information. So presumably when you're reviewing a product, it's all based on data you've collected yourself. It should be at least. So if you were to do your own testing, it wouldn't apply to a use restriction. So if they put out Turing and it turns out it's a giant dumpster fire and you find that out by testing on it, you can still post that. That's information you found yourself that they can't, they don't, they don't, that's accepted from this. So no, they do not have to write a positive, positive press for them. You can very easily say, we tested their new GPU and it's terrible. That's fine. As long as it's based on your own information. And also my, so correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding further is that, uh, it, it does say, shall use confidential information for benefit of blah, blah, blah. So a review, I don't think is covered under confidential information at this point because it has entered the public domain either by NVIDIA or, or something like that. I mean, is that... Well, there's a couple different things. One, it, confidential information is defined as something they told you. If it's something you came upon yourself, it's not technically confidential information. Uh, two... If it's a review, so it's after a review embargo, technically everything's going to be in the public domain anyway. Everybody's going to know how many what the core count is. Everybody is going to know how much memory. Everybody's going to know the clock speed. Everybody's going to know everything about it. So nothing you really say is going to be covered under this anyway. This would obviously keep you from breaking a review embargo. If none of this is public yet and you decide to be a jerk and just publish all your information a week early, you're going to get stung. But for any reasonable use of, of a review, this won't affect you. At least I don't think it doesn't seem to me doesn't seem to me to be that way. The for the benefit of is a little bit odd, but it's not something that should send you running for the hills. For all I know, it was some you know some associate who threw that in there thinking it looked cute and it doesn't really mean anything. I, I don't know. It's not not something I'd really be concerned about. I'd be more concerned about the specific uses A through uh, H in paragraph three, which are very definite, and I wouldn't do any of that stuff. Right. Right, and so for, for talking about some of these, I guess we kind of addressed this one. Does the med- does this mean the media have to write only positive reviews? And I, I think our answer here is no uh, to that question. Next one is, uh, so we saw some online speculation. Those restrictions are crazy. Any outlet that signs these essentially opens them, themselves up to be sued by NVIDIA if NVIDIA doesn't like an article they write. Any thoughts on this? It's the same thing as the one above. I mean, uh, no. Okay, one, the restrictions aren't crazy. It seems to be pretty boilerplate for an NDA, especially because you can do whatever you want to do with your own generated data. Uh, and any outlet who that signs this, 
they open themselves up to be sued. If they don't like an article, they write, okay, that's wrong for a couple of reasons. One, yeah, technically NVIDIA can sue whoever they want, but they wouldn't. They're, they're not going to waste their time suing you for no particular reason, especially if they have no case. Uh, two, uh, you're, you're not opening yourself up to anything. And the agreement pretty clearly says that you're allowed to do this. And frankly, this isn't really all that different from any other embargo a reviewer might have. The difference is this one is actually on paper. Uh, otherwise, you're not doing anything different than you normally would do. Right. Uh, okay. So next question then is let's uh, let's do this one. So the problem also is that if they receive any information on upcoming products, they being reviewers, they can't write up rumor articles, which effectively squelches all these touring rumor articles. The vague wording allows them to expand upon what they can consider a breach of the NDA. Aside from that, uh, with this NDA popping up, touring possible soon. So, ignoring the last sentence there, uh, is there a? I, 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 let me provide, I guess, my thoughts on this first because this is very reviewer related. The way I interpret this user's post is uh, they're saying if if we reviewers receive information from Nvidia, then we can't turn around and post a rumor article or debunk existing rumor articles relating to that information, to which I would say that's very normal. So typically, if company A comes to us and says, Pro this product has these specs, we can't then try and be cute if we're under NDA and go do a news video and say, we're speculating that it might have these specs. That's not OK. Even if we say the word speculating, if we've been briefed on it and we're giving information that we were briefed on, that would be covered under an embargo or an NDA, even if we pretend like we're speculating. So if that's the concern, I would say it's very standard. If the concern is that, I don't know, let's say commenting on rumors from other people, Jack, how would you, let's say rumors or even facts are published online by someone else. Are we or other media outlets able to talk about those contents published by other people so if somebody there's really two circumstances here one is where somebody posts a not a fact but a a rumor a, this normal rumor mill stuff turing will clock to 10,000 megahertz and will shoot gold out of the the the, uh, the ports in the back you can't go on and say that's not true here's why you you can't comment on any of the rumors which frankly you shouldn't be doing anyway uh, you know, getting involved in the rumor mill is never really a good idea. Uh, but you you can't do that, which is pretty clearly stated. You know, you can't. Uh, this the information is controlled. You have to wait until embargo, which you know, makes sense. You just just don't comment on it. It's not all that difficult. Just don't say anything. I mean, you could say I can't say anything about this, or just like you may have in the past, or somebody else. But no, you couldn't talk about those rumors to quote unquote squelch them. Just leave them alone. It's not a big deal. With respect to information that is disclosed, so let's say somebody is under this NDA or for whatever reason, and they decide, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to go to publish this information anyway. Consequences be damned. Well, if it becomes public information, it's not it's not covered. If you look at paragraph four uh, and you look at A, uh, uh, you look at – so A says, was in the public domain at the time it was communicated to recipient or into the public domain subsequent to a time it was communicated. OK, so if somebody uh, – uh, so if somebody just posts the information online and becomes public knowledge, you can talk about that. That's fine. This is the reason we can, we can talk about this right now. It's public information. It's sitting right here in front of us. Everybody has it. Right, right. Uh, next one here is – so here's some, some more online speculation. Uh, this person said, I've signed the NDAs before, and this is definitely much more overreaching than your typical NDA. NDAs are typically focused on specific products, while this is basically about everything we tell you. Moreover, NDAs typically have an expiration date, such as a product release, whereas this does not have an expiration date. So how do we want to look at this question? Uh, I This seems very simple. It's only two pages. I, you know, I've seen settlement agreements that are or dozens or hundreds of pages long. This is really not all that long. It's two pages. It's not all that complicated. Normally, NDAs are focused on specific products. That's true. Uh, while this is kind of an everything we tell you, now – they may tell you a lot of stuff, which they say, this isn't confidential. You can go and release it. But some of it may be. That's true. However, I don't really see the difference. And you know, what does it matter? Whether they have they have to print out a new agreement every time they give you a new product or they just have an overarching one that covers 
whatever comes up in the future, it doesn't really matter, frankly. Uh, and with respect to the final comment about the expiration date, well, there is. I think some – I've seen a lot of comments online and I don't think people are reading this very closely. So there are two timeout dates on this agreement. One is the agreement itself. It says – on paragraph five, it shows up as four, that it will continue until terminated by either party in writing. So any party, whether NVIDIA or the reviewer or the recipient, I guess it would be, can terminate in writing at any time. So Steve, you could you could sign this and say a week later, this is BS, I don't want to do this anymore and notify them in writing, it's terminated. You're done. You're not bound by this agreement anymore. However, anything they told you while the agreement was in effect has a five-year it, it's it, this agreement sticks to it for five years. So if during the week where you were bound by this, they gave you a, a launch date for some product, whatever it is, that is consider would be bound. That would be held under this agreement as confidential information and all the stuff would apply for five years from the date they told you, regardless of whether or not you cancel the agreement or not. So the cancellation is more of a looking forward cancellation. So I'm canceling from this moment forward. I'm not abiding by this, but anything that happened prior to it, it's still covered. Which would make sense. Otherwise, they could tell you all kinds of information, which they would not want to get out to the public. And then you go, ha-ha, and pull the rug out from underneath them and say, I've canceled it, and now I can tell them whatever I want. It doesn't work <laughs> right, like that. Right, right, right. And I should also note that um, a five-year – so this five-year number, as you were saying, a lot of the comments basically say it lasts for five years. Well, it lasts until someone terminates. Correct. And the data is – or the I should say the confidential information – is protected for five years unless otherwise released. And if we're being real here, five years to me just seems kind of like a number they picked and said, yeah, that seems good. Because any product we talk about, once it gets to me in press, it's going to launch within probably a year. I was thinking about that when I was just talking about this, thinking, well, wait a second, five years seems really weird. It is a weird time frame, considering anything they're going to give you is going to come out within a year at most. They're not going to tell you about five years from now, we've created Skynet. And they're not going to do that. It does, I mean, I'm sure that's the year, that time frame they picked, which seems, well, this will cover everything without having to re, without having to tweak it. So I don't think it really matters. Honestly, I would be surprised if anything lasted the five years without going into the public domain just because they released a press statement about it or somebody leaked it or something happened. That would be very surprising to me. So I, I don't view that as being onerous at all. In fact, the, the, the simple fact that you can just terminate it at will for any reason, well, okay, you terminate it. Say, I don't want to deal, deal with this anymore. I'm going to go buy my own product and review it. I don't need your samples anymore. Okay. No one's making you sign this thing. Right. And so then uh... – Going back to the specific product naming, do you have a personal opinion on should a specific product be named or a specific timeline be given versus this kind of blanket agreement? Not really. I think it depends on the situation. It's definitely more efficient to do it this way because that way you have one agreement and you're done. You sign it. You never have to do another one because, uh, you know, uh, although people might believe NVIDIA's pockets are bottomless, I assure you they're not. And spending wasted money on lawyers to redraft this thing is a waste of money. A waste of money is a waste of money. So why do it more than once when clearly this seems to work and any party can cancel at any time? So I don't really see the point of doing a new one for every single product, although I guess if they wanted to do that, that's fine, but they both seem to work to me. Sure. So let's do a couple more here. There's one that said, uh, they were pointing out that the document defines confidential information as follows, and they quote it. And then they say uh, that this covers information from NVIDIA as well as from engineers or partners, which I think we discussed already, and the answer is it does not seem to cover partners. No, it says it, this agreement is actually quite specific despite popular opinion, and it says the you know, it's between, disclo between the disclosing party, which is NVIDIA, and any other subs – and you or whoever the recipient is. It doesn't include anybody else. So if, let's say, ASUS or MSI or Gigabyte were to tell you, one of their engineers were to tell you something about an upcoming uh, GPU or whatever they want to tell you about, that's not covered under this. This agreement doesn't apply to stuff that somebody else tells you. It only applies to something NVIDIA would tell you, which makes sense considering you can't force somebody else into an agreement if they're not a party to it. So... Right, and then uh, last couple here. So, oh, this we should mention this. So, one of the comments was Nvidia could decide GPP or whatever is a trade secret or confidential information and prevent journalists from speaking about it. Uh, so, 
trade secret and confidential information are two different things. I suppose we should note. Yeah, and, there. Yeah, I don't. There's a lot of things wrong with that comment, but we can kind of unpack that in a second. Sure. So trade secret. Uh, can Nvidia just decide theoretically? This this specific thing that makes us look bad is actually a trade secret. <laughs> So first off, we need to unpack the phrase trade secret. Trade secret is a specific legal term that ref that refers to certain things which are covered, but th they aren't covered under copyright uh, patent or uh, copyright patent or trademark. They would cover other random things. A good example of trade secret would be the Coca-Cola formula. That's covered under trade secret. It's something they have to keep secret, like really secret, in order for it to have certain protection. It's done at the state level. Uh, so you've heard the kind of this old story that. Uh, no one really knows the formula to Coca-Cola. Like two people know half the formula. You got to – that's kind of the idea. So if it was a true trade secret, they wouldn't be telling you because then it wouldn't be a trade secret anymore. So that's – got to unpack that. Now with respect to confidential information, yes, technically whatever they tell you, they could say this is confidential information. Don't tell anybody. But here's the problem with something like GPP. When it becomes public knowledge, you can tell anybody you want. So when somebody breaks the story of GPP – it's free. It, it's fair. You know, it's open. It's open season for that. You can do whatever you want to do on GPP or whatever it else they they say. Sure. And specifically relating to GPP, just because a lot of the comments were about this, I should note that GPP specifically, no one had any communication with Nvidia about this. So it's it's not like there was official information that would have been embargoed anyway. It was right. all this, third party. Right. This would kind of go back into the prior question of if a board partner tells you something, is it covered? No, it's not. So if there was another GPP, GPP2, and it was something super horrible, and Asus told you, hey, Steve, there's this horrible thing NVIDIA is making us do and sacrifice our children. Well, you could talk about that because that board partner told you NVIDIA didn't tell you. So that's fine. Uh, so it wouldn't really cover something like that. I mean, yes, technically you could say they could they can call anything confidential information. That's fine. It's up to them. But at the same, you know, if you were too, but think of it this way: if you're writing this agreement and you're too specific, you need to rewrite it again if there's something that comes up that you can't think of. And again, there are plenty of ways you can get out of this. There are, you know, A through E of different ways that this doesn't apply. The best of which is public information, or it's not from, or if it's not even from Nvidia. So that's really not something I'd particularly worry about. Right, and also, to be fair here, if NVIDIA is doing something truly awful, they're not going to tell us anyway, even in confidence. Exactly. I mean, you know, I feel like people always assume lowest common denominator, like they're, like they're brain dead. They're not brain dead. If there was something really horrible, they wouldn't tell you. Uh, I, and I read this NDA, it's simple, it's not really all that onerous, and you can always say no. Right, and then finally, that's that's the last point. So, general discussion... Uh, likelihood of enforcing what is realistic enforcement. I can speak to this a bit. So if we, let's say we break this NDA, let's say there is something like GPP2, and for whatever reason, NVIDIA says, hey, uh, Gamers Nexus, confidentially, we're actually screwing over all of our board partners, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> to, you know, to some extent, one, people can find ways to get that information out without implicating themselves, if we're being real here. And uh, obviously, you always have to be careful with that kind of thing. You don't know who else they've told. Maybe they've only told you. Uh, but if there's something truly awful, I believe from our standpoint in media, you have an obligation to, one, validate that and make sure it's true with a lot of sources. And two, if it is true, you find a way to publish it, whether it's directly or indirectly, uh, and you worry about figuring out how this NDA may or may not apply in that specific circumstance rather than just fabricating the scenario and planning for it way ahead of time. Uh, because again, they're probably not going to tell us we're doing awful things. So that's more likely to come from a third party. So likelihood of enforcing and what is enforcement, I think typically the most realistic breach of this would be someone posts a review a day early. And they might say, oops, it was an accident, time zones, I'm sorry, sort of was configured wrong, whatever. Realistically, NVIDIA will probably, as long as the publication takes that article down as soon as possible, they're probably not going to sue them. Uh, they might stop sampling them or might delay sampling in the future or something like that. But a, an actual lawsuit, just speaking in terms of what we've seen in the industry, is incredibly unlikely for an honest mistake. 
uh, for a for a dishonest mistake, maybe they publish it early just because they want the views and the clicks. The most likely mode of enforcement for this kind of thing is always going to be pulling sampling, not suing everybody on the planet. So I think that's that's probably the the most likely scenario of something being breached is that that person will no longer be in the loop on future product developments. Uh, and also, as we mentioned earlier, you don't have to keep this agreement. You can walk out at any time, tell them, I don't want it, don't have to sign it to begin with. And I really don't, personally speaking, uh, I, I don't see a huge problem with it the way it's presented. The only kind of hanger on that we've kind of discussed was the specific phrase what was it to the benefit of nvidia for the benefit of for, solely for the benefit of nvidia and who knows what that means i i i don't like it because i am who i am but uh, you know i i in reading this i wouldn't be terribly concerned about it because it seems like that's really focusing more on here are seven different reasons or whatever a through h reasons that uh, situations where you're not allowed to do this I'd focus way more on that than solely for the benefit of, but you know. Right, and which has potential uh, neutral judgment, as you said. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, whenever you're looking at something like this, there's always a chance that somebody's going to interpret it differently than you do. If you're looking at it as a reasonable person and look, coming from the perspective of an attorney, I look at this and go, eh, okay, whatever. Uh, it doesn't seem. It makes me go, eh, maybe they shouldn't have used that word, but it's not something where. You know, I'd have a ton of red flags go off and, you know, don't, don't, don't sign this. It's horrible. Eh, I don't know. It doesn't seem like a big deal to me. Right. And we should also, a final note here, whenever any of these contracts come across desks, keep in mind that there's a good possibility that people receiving them will make changes. So the one that Haiza has published isn't necessarily the same that everyone has agreed to because one, NVIDIA sometimes will send out documents with changes for specific regions. And two, the receiving outlets could request changes as well. So, uh, so these could be slightly modified depending on who you talk to. But I think that pretty much covers it. So, well, uh, I don't know any any closing thoughts, or you think we got it all? I think we pretty much got it all. I mean, I'll be honest. This kind of seems like uh, making a mountain of a molehill. I don't really see the big deal about all of this. I mean, I guess it makes for a more interesting news day, but it seems like a pretty boring NDA to me. But what you know, what do I know? Right. So just just an attorney in the U.S. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that's uh, that's Jack, our legal correspondent. Thank you, Jack, for joining me. Oh, of and, course. And I suppose if any of you want to discuss this further uh, sound off in the comments though i i'm not sure what we're going to see at this point so as always subscribe for more patreon.com slash gamers helps out directly thank you for watching we'll see you all next time